Hey guys, welcome to Jack's Beautiful You. In today's video, we are going to be reviewing two new releases from Navitas Parfums. So the first one is Venom of Love, and this is in collaboration with Paulina Shar. And I'm super excited to tell you guys my thoughts on this one. I have given this a full three-day wear test. I definitely have my final thoughts and opinions on this fragrance. And the same with Chocolate Queen. This is a collaboration with Gabby from Gabby Loves Perfumes. So again, I gave this a full three-day wear test. Cannot wait to tell you how I feel about these fragrances. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jackie. Thank you so much for clicking on my thumbnail today. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing, and if you like this video and find it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on these fragrances, then just keep on watching. All right, let's start with Venom of Love. So I had an idea that I was going to like this fragrance when I heard about it. When I first heard about it, I thought that sounds like a perfume that is right up my alley. I really enjoy gourmand fragrances and I really enjoy cherry as long as it doesn't smell medicinal. I love a good gourmand cherry fragrance. I love a good chocolate fragrance. And this sounded like something that I would just love. So I wasn't really surprised when I got it and smelled it and it smelled pretty much exactly what I expected it to smell like. And to me, this fragrance smells like a chocolate cordial. So basically a chocolate covered cherry is exactly what this smells like to me. All the way to the like juicy, sweet, creamy middle part of a chocolate cordial that I can kind of get in here as well. That's what I expected and that's what I got. So top notes, you have sour cherry, you have liquor, and you have bitter almond. I will say this does smell very boozy to my nose, which I enjoy. I enjoy boozy fragrances, but I will say if you do not like boozy fragrances, you might want to keep that in mind. So every time I wear this fragrance, I always picture me eating like chocolate covered cherries and drinking some sort of boozy like rum or something like that. That's exactly what it smells like. That's exactly what I get. It's not necessarily a, a super complex fragrance to my nose, but I I really enjoy it. I think this smells incredible. It's very delicious. Uh, in the middle, you have cherry, you have chocolate, you have Turkish rose. I don't really pick up rose throughout the entire wear of this fragrance. And then there's also jasmine, but I don't really get that either. In the base, you have amberwood, almond, vanilla, and whipped cream. I think the whipped cream in here kind of adds to that feel of like the the inside of a chocolate covered cherry. You know, like a cherry cordial. I don't know what that's called. It's not like cream, but it's kind of like creamy. <laughs> kind of like a creamy, sweet, I don't know inside. I'll put a picture up on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. But I think that this is delicious. If you love a realistic foodie gourmand, if the idea of smelling like a chocolate cherry cordial sounds great to you, then I cannot imagine you wouldn't like this. But please keep in mind of the strong liquor note that is in here. You have to like boozy notes which I do. So if that sounds appealing to you, I can't imagine you're not going to like this. I think it smells incredible. It's fantastic. It is the type of perfume that is right up my alley. This is my type of perfume here. So I really had no expectations to not like this. And the cherry that's in here, oh, it smells a lot like Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. Now this perfume doesn't smell like Tom Ford's Lost Cherry, but the cherry that's in here is that same gourmand, sweet kind of edible cherry that you get from Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. It definitely makes my mouth water. And then I get chocolate throughout the entire length of this fragrance. However, I have watched some reviews of people who said they only get chocolate in the opening and then it goes away. Uh, I don't have that experience. I really make out chocolate. I mean, it literally just smells like a chocolate covered cherry. I know I sound like a broken record, but from beginning to end, it pretty much smells the same to me through the entire wear of the fragrance. A cherry cordial, with some boozy notes. That's what I get. So very delicious, very fun, gorgeous gourmand fragrance. The performance of this is really good. I have zero issues with the performance of this. I did spray it though and let it sit for a while before I tested it. So I did give it time to macerate because I had heard that some people were having like issues with the performance and I did want to give it a little bit of time to macerate because I saw a video of Paulina saying that since this is a new formulation, sometimes you have to give it a minute. So that's what I did. Sprayed it, put it away, and then tested it out a little while after that. And I haven't had any issues at all with the performance. I wouldn't consider this necessarily a beast perfume. This isn't like a beast perfume, but 
definitely a good performing perfume that I can smell on me through most of my day with a great scent bubble. I definitely can get wafts of it. I'm happy with the performance. I think it's a good performing perfume. So I am a big fan. I think Venom of Love is absolutely delicious. And yeah, if you want to smell like a chocolate covered cherry with some boozy notes, then look no further than Venom of Love. Great job to Paulina Shar. I think this is beautiful. All right, up next we have Chocolate Queen, and this is in collaboration with Gabby from Gabby Loves Perfumes. And when she was talking about this fragrance, it made my mouth water. I was a little bit concerned because sometimes that many gourmand notes in one perfume can be overwhelming to me. I'm a big gourmand lover, but if it's too rich, if it's too sweet, I don't really like it. It's kind of like in my, like, how I like desserts. So if I'm gonna order a dessert, I don't want like death by chocolate, you know? I don't want chocolate with chocolate frosting and chocolate syrup and chocolate sprinkles and chocolate chips, you know what I mean? Like that's, my daughter, she loves that type of thing. Like the more chocolate, the merrier. It's nothing is ever too sweet or rich for her. <laughs> but for me, I just, I, I have to have it balanced. Like I have to have it toned down in my actual food and in my gourmands. It can't be, overwhelmingly sweet. So I was a little bit nervous about this because in this perfume you have dark chocolate, you have hazelnut, you have dulce de leche, you have chocolate fudge. <laughs> I mean, does that sound rich to you or what? You have caramel, there's bitter almond and Irish cream, and then in the base you have vanilla absolute, praline, amberwood and sandalwood. There are so many sweet, like the potential for this fragrance to be so sticky sickening sweet really seemed to be there. But I was so happy when I got this perfume because this is not like that at all. So if all of those extremely gourmand notes kind of scare you, if the idea of all those together seems like it's gonna be a bit over the top for you, I don't think that that's the case with this fragrance at all. I was actually surprised when I first sprayed this because it didn't smell overly sweet to me. I mean, I definitely pick up a sweetness from this fragrance for sure, but when you first spray it, it's not, yeah, it's not overly sweet. It's sweet, it's a gourmand, but it is very, very well balanced. I was extremely happy about that. So in the base, I did mention there's amberwood and sandalwood, and I do pick up those woody notes in this fragrance throughout the entire fragrance, and I really think that's important because it made this perfume balanced. It made it, yeah, it made it perfect. I mean, it's, it's perfectly done in my opinion. I really, really, really like this fragrance. This is like such a perfectly done gourmand that has a lot of decadent notes without being too decadent, if that makes sense. So when I first sprayed this, I was a little shocked to get so much of the woodiness in this perfume. But again, like I said, I think that is super important to keep this perfume grounded. So first spray, I do get like a lot of dark chocolate. I get a lot of the chocolate for sure, uh, which I love, and then I get a lot of the woody notes. As this starts to dry down, I will say this takes you on one heck of a fun journey, okay? This is not a linear perfume at all. I went through a quest <laughs> with this perfume. I mean, I was going on some kind of fun little, little ride with this perfume because it goes all over the place. And somehow, some way, at some point through the journey of this fragrance, you really do pick up each and every one of these notes. And it is fascinating. Like, I really thought that was super fun. I got the chocolate very strongly in the opening, but as it starts to dry down, you do start to pick up the hazelnut, the caramel starts to come through. At one point, I specifically smelled fudge. I remember somewhere in the mid of this perfume, I was like, oh my God, I smell fudge. And I realized it was my perfume. And it actually was so strong that it made me crave fudge and I actually went and made fudge. But again, while all of these notes are coming out, you're still getting those woody notes throughout the entire time. And it's constantly balancing the fragrance out and keeping it from being too sickly sweet, in my opinion anyway. I did forget to mention that in the opening, I do pick up a bitter almond smell. So a lot of chocolate, a lot of bitter almond, and I get a lot of uh, woody notes in the opening. And at first, I was just kinda like, oh, there's a lot of bitter almond in here, but that quickly dies down. It's only like a couple of minutes that I get that bitter almond in the opening, and then it just dies down. Then you go through all those gourmand notes, you go through this fun little journey, but my favorite part is the base because then the Irish cream comes out and holy cow does it smell delectable. 
I mean, it smells incredible. I am so in love with this fragrance. I love the fact that this is not in any way, shape, or form a simple fragrance at all. This will take you through a journey. This is not linear in any way, shape, or form. You will go through a journey with this fragrance. You will smell fudge. You will smell caramel. You will smell bitter almond, and you will smell chocolate. You will smell Irish cream in here, and that's my favorite part. The dry down of this perfume is my favorite, and the performance of this is pretty decent as well. Again, not a beast fragrance, but I feel like this is going to get stronger with time. Again, this is a new formulation, and I didn't give this one as much time to macerate as I did Venom of Love before I tried it. So I didn't get bad performance from this fragrance at all. This definitely smelled amazing all day long. It lasted all day, but I suspect this will get stronger and possibly even beast mode in time. I'm not sure. I'll keep you updated on that. But now my husband does think that this is a very strong perfume. I sprayed this in the morning. I left the house. My husband got home before me and he thought I was home. And he was surprised because my car wasn't outside and he couldn't figure out where I was because my perfume smelled so strong in the house that he thought I was actually home. Like I had come home and sprayed this perfume again. And uh, yeah, so to him, I think my husband has a more sensitive nose than I do. Things smell stronger to him than they do me. So to him, he thought this was a strong, strong perfume. To me though, it just smelled like a good, like a good performing perfume with decent projection and decent longevity. So no complaints on either one of these with the performance. I think they're both really good with the potential to get stronger over time. But I love both of them so much. I think they are so great. I am super excited to have these in my collection and I have just been in love with both of these. I think both of these are going to be a gourmand lover's dream and I also feel like these are going to be absolutely perfect for winter time. So congratulations to Paulina Shar. Congratulations to Gabby. Gorgeous fragrance. I'm super excited to have both of them. And they were both super successful blind buys for me. I love them both a lot. So that is Venom of Love and Chocolate Queen. Those are my thoughts on those two fragrances. I would love to know from you guys what you think. Have you tried these fragrances? What are your thoughts? What are your opinions? And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope everybody is having an amazing day. If you like this video and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in my next video. Bye!